Hello students, this is Dr. Fazan Mirza. Um, in this video, I'll be covering with you the instrument called hemocytometer and what is the use of hemocytometer and where it can be used. This is, I'll be taking an example from the question that came in May June 2019, variant 52. And basically, hemocytometer is a glass slide. This is a glass slide on which you can place sample uh, of cells which are present in a liquid. So you have a, a, a liquid sample and in that liquid sample, there are cells there and uh, you can count the number of cells in that liquid sample by adding the adding a very small quantity of that liquid sample onto this glass slide. This glass slide is called a hemocytometer. This is used for counting the cells and how the cells are counted. The grid that we, that you can see in the microscopes once the cells have been uh, once the cells have uh, like uh, settled in these in this slide this slide is having a depth of 0 0.10 millimeter and its sides are basically just squares and there are various squares in this uh, in this slide in which you start to count individual square one square is 0 0.05 millimeter wide and 0 0.05 millimeter long and its depth is 0 0.10 millimeter so if you start to count the number of cells in this one square you are actually counting the number of cells in 0 0.0025 millimeter cube of the liquid sample because this is how you calculate the volume of a uh, of, of, of this this kind of a um, uh, you can say grid in which you multiply the length and the width with the depth so you get the volume in millimeter cube so uh, I'll be taking the I'll be discussing this question and how the cells are counted and what rules are to be kept in mind because in a in a question where you are asked to uh, you are you are you are asked how the cells can be counted you have to describe you have to give a description of how how the cells can be counted on using the separator. So the question here is about sperm productions in humans is controlled by hormones FSN and FSH and LH. This is told to you. The, these hormones are released from pituitary glands in males to maintain the constant concentration in blood. Research shows that a sperm production in humans has decreased during the last 75 years. This research was has highlighted concern about the fertility of future generations. Assessments of fertility are carried out by diluted semen sample. This means that the semen, which already is a liquid sample, it is further diluted. These samples are checked for sperm per millimeter cube, motility, and abnormal structure. So you are counting the number of sperms, you are checking their motility, how well they can move. You are also noting how the features of the sperm are, are they abnormal or are they normal. So all they can be, uh, all these can be assessed using this apparatus. Uh, figure 2.1 shows the sperm in one part of the hemocytometer grid used for counting the sperm. The microscope illumination causes the sperm heads to fluoresce. You can see these are the sperm heads and this is the tail. So they, they fluoresce. Now, further say, further it is, tell, it is told to you, the semen sample shown in figure 2.1 was diluted by a factor of 100. It means it was 100 times diluted. So these samples which you are, these cells which you will end up counting here, are diluted by 100 times, which means these are not the actual count present in the actual semen sample, but it is actually diluted 100 times. So this is diluted sample. Describe a method by which the number of sperms present in, the, in this diluted sample could be estimated. Now, when you are using a counting grid, there are certain rules that you have to keep in mind. Now, for example, if you are, you are counting the sperms here, the cells, the, the cells which have the sperm head in this in this square will be counted in this square and anyone whose head is touching the left border or the lower border will be ignored altogether. So for example, I'll count this sperm in this box, it will be counted and this 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 head is this head is here uh, touching this this border, the right border and the upper border, anything that is touching the upper border and the right border will be counted in the same square. Any cell occupying within the box will be counted in the same box as well. But any cell which is touching the left border or the lower border will be ignored altogether and it will not be counted in that box. So this is the rule that you uh, that you have to follow. So how, how, how the dilute sample you can estimate the sperms count here. So count of the sperm inside the complete squares, the sperms with heads inside the square 
are counted sperms touching the border at left and the top are counted in that square as i told you we will be counting the ones which are touching the border here in this box and anyone who's touching the right and the lower border will be excluded so this rule will be stated here and whatever the sperms we have counted we have counted this in this many this amount of uh, of liquid sample because this box can hold 0 0.0025 millimeter cube of liquid sample and the liquid sample was a semen sample which was already diluted by 100 times now moving on describe how you could estimate the number of sperm per millimeter cube in the original sample undiluted semen sample so how can you estimate that so what do you do you calculate the number volume of one square we know the volume of square can be calculated by multiplying its three dimensions together the answer that we get will actually tell you the volume that this square can hold. The number of sperms counted are then divided by the total volume of that one square. For example, if I had four sperms there, I'll divide this by the total volume there. And my answer will then be basically showing to me the sperm count in the diluted sample. Since the sample was diluted 100 times, what I'll do, whatever my answer comes, I'll multiply that answer with the dilution factor, which means I'll multiply that by 100 times because that was in a 100 times diluted sample. And this will give me the estimated number of the sperm that uh, in the undiluted sample. So just why this method of counting sperm may not represent the actual number of sperm in the original that would sample, why it may not represent, we know the sperms are motile and they might have moved in or out of the squares, miscounted sperms from they also form clumps, they may overlap, and this, this may result in uh, a, 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 a wrong count. Part B, hormone imbalances can result in reduced sperm production and immobile sperms leading to infertility. A study was carried out in, on 120 men of different with different causes of infertility. All the subjects were non-smokers, did not drink, and did not take any medication for six months before the study. So this actually is the exclusion criteria, or you can say the inclusion criteria. How, which, which subjects were included in the study and which subjects were excluded from the study. And this is what is controlled here. So this, this is this, these are the controlled variables. The concentration of hormones FSH and LH were measured in each men. Semen samples were collected, tested for within two hours of collection. The number of sperm per millimeter cube were estimated and the motility of the sperm assessed. Identify two variables that have been standardized in this study. So we know the sperms will be counted in the same volume of 0.025 millimeter cube of diluted sample. As there was abstinence from smoking and alcohol, sperm were tested within two hours of collection. So you can mention any two of these which were standardized. Now, if you come to the to the bar chart here, uh, the, this is this is this is partly a bar chart and partly a histogram telling you the comparative bars here. Uh, so figure 2.2 shows the concentration of FSH and LH in four test groups. In one test group, the men are fertile, and the other three groups, the men show different types of infertility. So group one, in, in one of one test group, the men are fertile. So if we use the key FSH and LH, FSH is shown by the blank uh, bars and the LH is shown by the black bars. Number one is fertile. So all these men are fertile. You can see the LH and FSH values of these individuals. They are pretty low compared to the two second group. Infertile due to non-motile sperm. So if the concentrations of of FSH start to increase, and you can say LH is a bit decreased as compared to group one. These are infertile due to non-motile sperm. Number three group, these are infertile due to low sperm number in the semen. And again, you can see that here, the value of, of this hormone, this FSH is slightly raised. So you can see slightly FSH elevation is causing infertility either by non-motile sperms or by reducing the number of sperm count. Then four is infertile due to no sperm present in the semen. And in this, you can say LH is largely raised and FSH is raised as well. So you can just see which bar we are talking about. So the blank bars are the are the are the FSH and the and these bars, the black ones are the are the LH. State the reason for including the hormone concentration of fertile men. Why was group one added? Because group one behaves as a control. Control because in these the, all, all men are fertile. So we know the baseline of standard individual men who are fertile and what's the hormonal profile of FSH and LH in these men. And when compared to others who are infertile because of various causes, their LH and FSH ratio is different from group one. So this can be used as a standard for comparison purpose with just groups. 
State one conclusion about FSH and LH infertility in men that is consistent with the results of investigation. Sperm mortality is reduced by higher FSH and lower LH and is caused infertility in group two. So you can very well see uh, the ratio being disturbed here. Then the part C, semen samples may also be tested for viability of sperm. Viability means how many are living. So viability is the proportion of live sperm present in the semen samples. Uh, viability of sperm can be tested using chemical which stains the living cells of a different color to dead cells. So living sperm and dead sperms can be differentiated from one another. So just a method using this stain and a hemocytometer that could be used to test the viability of sperm in a semen sample. What you can do, you can just count the proportion of live and dead sperm using the microscope and this hemocytometer using these stains because these stains will stain live and dead sperm differently. So this is how this can be tested. Now, the question that I've just discussed, I would recommend that you just uh, try to resolve and reattend this yourself and see what you actually got from this video uh, and make sure that you go for a self-assessment of this question so you know what you actually could grasp. So it's, it's, so it's not always with the semen sample. They, they, they gave a similar question in October, November 2009 for invariant 51. In this again, the counting chamber was shown and they were telling you how a cell sample is being given different kind of growth hormones. One is being given growth hormone, the other is being given distilled water. The one with distilled water will be the control because you are not adding the growth hormone here and you want to see how much cells can grow in the presence of the growth hormone in the absence of the growth hormone. So if you just go through this question, you can see a much detailed uh, description of the hemocytometers presented to you. I'll just cover this brief description. I'm not going to the whole question. So you can see the figure 2.1 shows the top view of a microscope slide with the counting grid. This is again the hemocytometer. Figure 2.2 shows the vertical section through the microscope slide in the grid. Figure 2.3 shows the detailed part of the grid viewed through the microscope. So this is the counting grid. Figure 2.1. This is this is this is what you can view in the in the glass in the microscope by placing the cover slide on top of the glass slide. The depth is here given to you as 0.1 millimeter. Now, if you focus this here, this is actually some, some different kind of dimensions are given to you because they are taking a larger square for, 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 uh, for estimation. Here they have told you that the length of this square is 0.2 millimeter and the width is 0.2 millimeter. And we know that the, the depth is 0.1 millimeter. So again, calculating the, this, uh, this volume would actually be the same procedure and we'll get the answer in millimeter cube. So this will be the amount of, of the liquid sample that can be held in this particular, particular slide. Now, how do you start to count? You take the liquid samples of the cells and you add it onto the slide. And since the slide is already holding the liquid sample, you don't start to count them right away. You wait for, for, for instance, you wait for two minutes, you allow the cells to settle in these, in these depressions, in these crevices, which are of 0.1 millimeter depth. So once these are settled there, then you start to count. And again, when you are counting, you have to keep the same rule applied there that any cell which is touching the upper border will be counted in that square and anyone touching the, the left-hand border will be counted, but any cell touching the lower border or the right border will be ignored altogether. And then you can just start to count how many cells are there and get an estimation. Again, in this question, if you go through, they have not given any dilution. They have just told you that the cells were calculated. They have not given any dilution factor. So here we did, we, we won't multiply it with any dilution factor. In the other question that I've just discussed, the dilution factor was also provided. So you should know how the hemocytometer grid is used for cell counting. Um, I hope this video was helpful for you. Do uh, share your comments in the section below. Uh, that's all from my side. Thank you so much.